Hey folks, this is Justin with Effective Remote Work here. Obsidian is a powerful next generation note-taking tool. We've been doing a number of videos on it or on the channel here in the last few weeks. And you might be wondering, okay, I, I've never used a tool like this before. How do I get started? Well, today's video is for you. We're gonna get into the basics of taking notes with Obsidian. The number one general principle to keep in mind with any productivity software, and including taking notes like this, is to start simple, but then grow iteratively. It can be really tempting to try to figure out a structure and a format for everything that you need to keep in your system all up front. But the problem with that is, is that one, you're probably going to introduce things that are a little bit too complex or complicated. Two, you're going to have friction in your system that you built in by default because you haven't actually used it yet. And three, as a result of those things, it may make using that software a little less appealing and potentially you even stop using it altogether because there's so much friction in it. I say these things from experience because I've gone way too complicated and try to figure out things all up front before and this has been the result every single time. I end up blowing things up and having to start over or I stop using the system altogether because I make it too complicated. So start simple, I mean as simple as you can and take little tiny steps to improve it and grow it as you go. So in getting started with Obsidian, let's dive into the settings first. There's a couple of places that we need to make some changes here that I think are powerful for first time users. First in the editor, I like to turn on the fold heading and fold indentations uh, settings here. It just is a nice way to clean things up if you have multiple headings inside of a, sim a single note and you only wanna focus on one section. Next under plugins, let's turn on three plugins here that I think are helpful. The defaults are helpful, but the three plugins that I think are add some extra help to new users of Obsidian are the tag pane, starred, and then daily notes. We'll take a look at each one of these, but basically the tag pane allows you to see a list of all the tags in the right-hand sidebar so that you can search for them easily. Starred allows you to surface frequently used files in the left-hand sidebar, and daily notes allows you to create a note for each day. And that's where we're gonna start because I find the most power in using a tool like Obsidian is in the daily notes. Now let's go over here to the left-hand sidebar and you can see the open today's note button. We'll click that. And then you can see it automatically creates a brand new note in this empty demo vault uh, with today's date. This is where I recommend living out of, at least to start with, when you're working in Obsidian. The daily note is a is kind of your landing pad. If you keep Obsidian up on your screen or have it available uh, on whatever device you're using, you can just quickly input stuff into the daily note. Say you're watching a video by CGP Grey called Spaceship U, which I think is a fantastic video if you're trying to figure out how to live life working from home, uh, and you wanna take some notes on it and you have some thoughts that you had while uh, watching the video. What you could do is you can type in the name of the video here, and then that you watched it. That's cool, but uh, the power of Obsidian is that you can link notes together. And so from the daily note, what I like to do is to wrap that in Wikilink. So all, what I did here was I just highlighted the words and then I pressed the left angle bracket or square bracket, and then it automatically surrounded the words with uh, a Wikilink uh, syntax here. So then if I wanna take some notes on this specific uh, video, I can just hold down command on the Mac or control on Windows, I believe, click on it, and it creates this brand new note file for me. So in here, a few things that I'll do to start off with is that I'll usually tag it video. So I'll just say type video, and then I can, uh, put some other metadata information in here just so I have it for reference. I'll do a link to the video and then uh, topics. 
Now, you can do topics as tags, but I like to do them as uh, wiki links to pages because you get the power of backlinks with that. Whereas if I just want to see a list of all the videos that I have, tags are just perfectly fine for that. So I'll put in productivity and working from home here as far as topics. Then I can start taking notes on the video. Okay, you get the idea here of how you can start to take notes. Take notes in whatever way makes sense for you. I like to use bullet lists, you can use headings, or you can just use plain old paragraphs in here. Whatever works best for you and the way that you think and work. That's the power of using a tool like this is that there's lots of flexibility on how to use it. Now you can see in the left hand sidebar here, if we click on tags, you can see video. Now that we've enabled that plugin, so then you can click on that and see all the files that are tagged video. Pretty, pretty nice to have that all available there. Now on the topic of taking notes themselves, I want to encourage you to, instead of just grabbing quotes from videos or from articles, books, whatever you're consuming and pasting them in here and trying to link all those things together, the better approach is to try to synthesize that information into your own thoughts and words. There's two reasons for this. One, quotes tend to lose context. Over time, when you come back to quotes that you've clipped from a book and you just leave them there without any context or information from what you were thinking at that point in time and why it was important to you or why it was standing out to you, it's not going to have the same meaning as it did when you first initially encountered that information. So when you synthesize that information into your own words, it allows you to retain that context. Additionally, when you synthesize that information yourself, you also retain it better. You can remember those ideas because then you've formulated your own thoughts as to what that idea is. So when you're watching this video on uh, Spaceship You by CGP Grey, make sure that you're not just writing down what he says, but write down your thoughts on what he says too. So if it sparks a thought to say, hey, I should probably do some more push-ups because that is one thing that I enjoy doing to help keep myself healthy, write that down. Because that's your thought in regards to that video. Let's head back to the daily note page because there's a couple other things that I'd like to show you. So you can take notes on videos and things like that in here. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, with taking notes on specific pieces of content, you could take those inside the daily notes, but I like to link them to the pages because that allows you to more uh, atomically link to those topics or those videos at a later date or articles, whatever it is, at a later date and time. It helps you build out the knowledge graph inside of the software, whereas if it was just in your daily note, you could really only link to the daily note itself. Another cool thing you can use uh, Wikilinks for in here is to say uh, a specific type of uh, information you want to denote. So say I learned something today that I want to note about. Well, I can put a TIL tag here today I learned uh, and I can say that Ruby is a pretty cool programming language. And then when you click on that, it creates the TIL note. So you can see here in the file explorer that we have TIL now. But the power of that and being in your daily notes or anywhere else within Obsidian, when you use that is then under backlinks, it'll show you the paragraph where that uh, page was linked from. So essentially, if you keep using this on a regular basis, you get a whole long list of today I learns right here in this backlinks pane. And then you can start to connect those ideas together in lots of different ways. Same thing here with uh, Spaceship U. You can see that you linked this on uh, 6 9 2020 that you watched that video. And then if there's something else somewhere else where I reference this video inside my database, I can see that here. 
very helpful because this generates what we call a knowledge graph. Let's open up the graph view really quick. Now this is pretty small, obviously, because it's a brand new database, but you can get the idea of the different types of information and the different power that you get from linking concepts together. You have main concepts that you're thinking about, like working from home and productivity, you can start to see the relationships between the different types of notes that you have there. So I can say, oh, CGP Gray's Spaceship U video is related to both working from home and productivity. And there may be a connection between those that I can make, or I'm consuming a lot of content around those topics and I'm starting to see things cluster around there. And I can maybe dive in a little bit deeper and synthesize those thoughts a little bit more if I'm interested in doing so. Now, if you have a topic that you're uh, starting to write a lot about and take a lot of notes on, one thing you can do is you can star that note. If you remember at the beginning, we uh, turned on the starred notes plugin. So let's go to this productivity page here. And then all we need to do to star it is go up to more options and then click star. Alternatively, you can hit Command P and open up the command palette and type in star, and you can hit enter to star or unstar the current file. Pretty cool, uh, quick little shortcut there. Then if we go over to the left-hand pane and click on starred, you can see productivity is here. Again, like I said, if you have areas that you're frequently referencing, such as in my personal uh, vault that I have, I have a, a page for effective remote work, where I'm starting to toss around ideas as far as uh, videos for the YouTube channel here, courses that I want to build, things like that. But it's just an ideation phase where I can kind of dive into them and think through them a little bit and tie ideas together inside the knowledge graph in my personal vault. If you have notes that become more frequently referenced, use the starred functionality. These are just a few basic building blocks to get you started in using Obsidian to build your own personal knowledge graph. There are lots more complicated things that you can do, or not so complicated, but more complex things that you can start to build on top of this as you get more comfortable. You can start implementing more of a Zettelcast and note-taking style in here where you focus on uh, topics in a specific note and just start to refine things a little bit more as you go. But the whole idea here is to keep it simple, start taking notes wherever you feel comfortable, and start taking your own thoughts into notes. That's probably the most important thing. Don't just copy in information from other people, but make sure you're writing your own thoughts down, because that's what allows you to put it all together, keep it in context in your brain and in the software, so that this stays a useful tool for you in the future. That wraps things up for today's video. If you have more questions about this topic or any topics in relation to productivity or note-taking or remote work, please put them below in the comments. We're here to help you be more successful and live an effective life inside of remote working and productivity tools and thinking and all of that fun stuff. Again, my name is Justin. This is Effective Remote Work, and thanks for watching today.